should we should begin to do the work of the evangelist because the Lord's telling me that we're entering into a season of harvest. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're entering into a season of harvest and um, he told me he's sending me out now into labor, into into laboring into his harvest. And I just feel a shift and I know there's a shift. I'll come back to that, but praise the Lord. So glad that you guys are here. And for those that are watching, we welcome you. Um, I posted something on my um, Facebook a couple days ago um, concerning today's message, which is uh, on the beauty of the Lord, but we're calling it the dew from heaven. And please hear me, there's a revelation on the dew from heaven that is so awesome. I've never heard it before. I know other people have probably preached on it, but I'm hearing it by the Spirit. Some revelation, you just have to be led into it. And the Lord has been leading me into this revelation of the dew from heaven and His beauty for a season. Yes. And uh, I just, Lord, I just pray that we give, bring you glory here, that people would, would actually get a greater revelation of your beauty through your grace, through this message. And we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And so this is uh, out of Deuteronomy uh, chapter 33, verse 28. And Moses was, uh, was talking and praying there. And it says, Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. And also his heaven shall drop down do and uh, there's so much in this little verse here maybe we can unpack some of it today but I'm telling you what the fountain of Jacob you know how many believe that we need the fountain of of Jacob bring upon us bringing <laughs> you know bringing us in and the revelation of the dew is something that's awesome as well Hope I've stirred your curiosity. I got anybody's curiosity going here a little bit? Okay. Just a show of hands. Has anybody ever heard about the dew of the Lord? The beauty, yes. the, the, the beauty but the dew. Yeah. Well, they're kind of connected. Yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of connected. Yeah, they are connected. <laughs> and uh, this is, I hope to bless you today. So if you have your Bibles open or if you're taking notes, um, Flip over to Psalms 90, 90, and um, pick up in verse 17. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory, huh? What do you think, Madeline? Amen. Okay, it says, Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Everybody there? No, I don't see it. What scripture? Verse 17, oh, Psalms 90. Oh, I'm in Deuteronomy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. How many are just willing to let the Lord's beauty be upon you? We're going to touch on a revelation on how that can come about. And it goes on to say, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. It's just a powerful verse. And I felt like the Lord highlighted that verse to me. And I think that this whole chapter is, is a chapter that this generation, please hear me, should be looking into as well. Uh, you know, it starts talking about the, let's just open it up here. Psalms 90. Uh, backing up here a few verses. I'm going to go quick here. How many know that our God is from everlasting to everlasting? He is. And, um, and this ties into something Jesus said concerning his coming and the end of the days. And uh, he says, Lord, in verse 1, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. 
before the mountains who were brought forth, or ever thou had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and says, Return, you children of men. And, uh, you know, the Lord will chasten us and things like that. He wants us to turn to him. Some of this old King James language is kind of hard to hear. It says, For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. Thou carries them away as a flood with a flood. They are a sleep as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows up. In the evening it is cut down and withers. We are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. I'm telling you, this is a revelation here. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. So, you know, there's nothing that escapes the Lord. How many know what I'm saying? Yeah. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. So many people are wasting time. And... Uh, as a tale. The days of our years are threescore and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. A lot of people are ready to fly away right now. <laughs> yeah. But it's not quite time to fly away. Okay. Who knows the power of thy anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. How many believe that's a good word right there? Mm -hmm. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. I'm telling you, this is so prophetic, this chapter. It really is. Make us glad according to the days where you have afflicted us in the years wherein you have, we have seen evil. Let thy works appear to thy servants and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands. Yea, establish our, you know, our hands establish thou it. It's a lot of stuff in that chapter. A lot of people don't like to preach, you know, on, on some of the stuff that I'm talking about. I just want to preach just so. But this is good news for the church, right? And it might awaken people that are asleep. It might stir people up in the world to come in, too. Our God is an awesome God, isn't he? And there's something about his beauty that he wants me to bring out today, too. And the Lord started talking to me about this verse, and he, go, he took me back to our days. And he reminded me of something that our Lord said concerning the generation. How many remember that? That's over in the book of, uh, what's well, in several of the Gospels there, but Matthew 24, he said, Learn a fig tree parable. Learn a parable of the fig tree. How many have learned that parable? I'm telling you. <laughs> When the branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door, doors. Verily I say to you, where most assuredly our Lord is saying here, this generation shall not pass till all those things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Oh man. And when you start to learn the lesson of the fig tree and you learn that he's talking about uh, the nation of Israel and how the nation of Israel came back to life, literally, you know, back in, I think it was in May 1948, I could be wrong there, but 1948, and you start looking at the generation, I'm telling you this is just a word, just for, for maybe somebody listening today, 
online or on television too. Generation is 70 years. If you're strong, is 80 years. That's what that means. And if you go back to 1948, we're already past 70 years. How many know what I'm saying? And it's interesting, isn't it? I'm not trying to freak anybody out, but hey, what if God, it really is God, and he means what he says, and he says what he means, and he does what he says, right? What do you think? And a lot of people are just saying, you know, he's never, you know, they don't see anything, but he comes at the appointed time. How many believe that our Lord comes at the right time, the appointed time? This is a word. And we've seen so many other prophetic filaments um, already. And so I don't know, I, I just wanted to bring that out too. But, but the exciting thing about this as well, there's something exciting about this, is the beauty of the Lord is going to manifest in a greater way than ever before. And that beauty is going to change you. It's going to change those that let it come upon them. It's going to bring them into his works. It's going to be an awesome thing. How many think that might be pretty cool? And uh, I'll just share a little testimony. I've shared this once before, maybe twice. One day I was driving down the road and I was really wrestling with stuff. Anybody ever wrestle with some stuff? And I think I was dealing with some spiritual, you know, religious spirits and stuff. And I came to the stop sign and I looked up in the sky and Jesus was looking at me. I saw him clear as a bell in the sky looking at me and his eyes looked at me and it was so awesome I couldn't put words to it back then I'm starting to get words for it through the revelation of scripture what I saw what I saw was his eyes were so pure he is so pure it did something to me changed me I'm still needing a lot of change don't get me wrong but it was so awesome and it was so beautiful the, the beauty of the Lord is, is, is an awesome thing. It went right through me and it changed me and I can't put words to what I saw. I've been thinking about that off and on and, um, you know, and, you know, Scripture talks about that and uh, there's something about the beauty of the Lord that will bring you into perfection. Something about the, the beauty of the Lord that will, will prepare you and uh, anyways, let me just give you a couple verses here. I'm telling you that, that when I saw that, it so transformed me. Uh, here's a few verses, just a little bit on his beauty. This is Psalms 50, verse 2. There's so much I could give you on this out of Scripture. But it says, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Hear that word, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Interesting. Psalms chapter 80, verse 3. Here's another one. These are like little keys and clues, too, that the Scripture gives us. Turn us again. Psalms 80, verse 3. Turn us again, O God. Cause thy faith, thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. And, uh, you know, the, something of his beauty will bring you bring you into deliverance, into salvation, into so much. We know the classic verse, many quote it, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. How many can quote that one? Yeah, I think you all could, yeah. You all know it, but we all, how many can say all? This is for everybody. With an open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And uh, what is it that changes us? And I want to suggest to you is part of it is his beauty. His beauty. He wants to adorn his bride. We're, we're like his help me, like in the garden, you know. You know, when, when Adam was facing, you know, uh, Eve, you know, there's something. He was... She was taken from him and something of our Lord, you know, we're one in the spirit, right? We're the bride of Christ. Anyways, there's something about 
the beauty of the Lord that the, he wants me to dig into. There's going to be a lot of revelation in the days ahead on his beauty. You know, um, I was thinking of that, that little vision I just shared, that little testimony. Here's a couple scriptures. First John, first John, this is a study today. First John 3, verse 1. When you start to, to get a revelation of what the Lord has for you, oh, it will change you. It, you'll you'll want to look at them. How do you look at them? Through the Word, right? Through the Scriptures, through your heart. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world doesn't know us because it knew Him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Oh, man. How many have had a glimpse of the Lord? It's awesome, huh? Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. And so there's something about hope that draws you in to, to this revelation, brings you into it. Now, let me just build on this revelation on the beauty of the Lord, the prophetic timeline that we're in, and how we can connect to this. Does that sound good? We've got some real grace here, I'm telling you. Flip over to Psalms. Psalms 110. Psalms 110. I'll pick up in verse 3. Hello, do you guys all got your Bibles? Praise the Lord. Who's there? All right. Hear what it says. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. Now, I've touched on this in the past, but only in a measure, and I'm just going to hit another measure or two today. The Lord has blessed me with some revelation, but how many believe that's you? How many are willing? What that word means, willing, is, is yielding yourself up as a sacrifice. This is how you tap into this realm. Does that make sense? And that's what, if you look at that word willing in the Hebrew, you're, you're willing to become a sacrifice. Okay? And um, notice the word, the womb of the morning. And um, that, is, that speaks volumes. And thou hast the dew of thy youth. And, um, oh man, another version in, uh, reads this way. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments from the womb of the morning. The dew of your youth will be yours. Just to kind of help um, that a little bit. The womb of the morning can, can refer to the very break of the morning. And uh, when the dew appears, how many know what I'm saying? This is a big deal. When the dew appears, this is like a prophetic thing here. Oh, man, I've had some dreams and some visions on this dew and the frost of the Lord, the cold of the Lord, the hoary frost it talks about in Scripture. You know, Jesus would that we would be cold or hot, not lukewarm, right? There's a revelation of the Lord's cold in Scripture that, that I'm going to get into in the future too. The cold. This is a big deal. And anyways, uh, the break of the morning where the dew appears. And so uh, it speaks also of freshness, strength, early stages of life. And um, how many believe that the Lord has all the, the dew of his youth? He has that strength. There's something of the dew of the Lord that can come on you. 
Does that make sense? This is a bigger deal than people may realize. This can connect you to victory, can make you more than a conqueror. Like my sister says, she's feeling like she's a conqueror today or something like that. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that scripture. Oh, you're more than a conqueror, right? Yeah. And there's something about the dew of the Lord coming on his provision, his promises that can empower you. Like, for example, when Gideon gave the fleece before the Lord, it's interesting that dew was the, was the witness coming on his fleece. And they came on the ground. And when you realize, when he realized the dew was there, he knew something about the dew. That was the Lord's, as you're going to see in Scripture, he's in the dew. The dew is something that just comes on you and gets into your very being and empowers you distills you, purifies you, gets rid of fear, makes you more than a conqueror. Sound good, sister? Yeah. So it's interesting. I'm not going there today on Gideon, but, but how many believe that a lot of people are like Gideon in this day, and they need the revelation of the dew of the Lord. He had that revelation that God was with him through the dew, the witness of the dew, and he went in, and what did he do? God delivered him, right? Big victory. Hallelujah. So we're going to build on that. <laughs> okay. Now, the womb of the morning, I've touched on this a little bit. The Lord's blessed me with this. But let's just go look at this a little bit more because this all ties in to the time that we're in. How many believe that we are in the morning right now? We're in the morning. How many knew that the the... The third day started in the fall. How many believe that? In Scripture, it's there. It's there. If you go dig it out, it's there. We're we're entering into the third day right now. Huh? The last days. Yeah, we're entering into the completion of times, the fullness of times, the things that have been prophesied. There was a convergence. There's so many signs, and I've been preaching on it for a while, but. We're entering into the dawning of the third day. We're in the morning hour right now. A lot of people are still asleep. They haven't woken up. But, but I'm telling you, when you wake up and you get a revelation of what I'm saying, it can change you. Um, I believe there's going to be a remnant that's going to wake, wake up. But go over to Hosea 6. And just touching on this, just, just reinforcing this. And uh, verse 1 says, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn. He will heal us. He has smitten. He will bind us up. He will heal us, right? After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. We shall live in his sight. We just touched on some of those verses. We're going to live in, the, in his beauty. And... Uh, how many believe the second day came? Jesus came, right? He revived us. And the third day, what's he doing? He's, he's, he's raising us up. The dew is like a finishing, uh, something that finishes too in, 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 uh, in, in gardening and things like that. And anyways, I want to get into that down the road. Then we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning. Okay, something's going to happen. It's been prepared for the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as a ladder in the former rain on the earth. And it says, O Ephraim, what shall I do to thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud and as an early dew, it goes away. And... Um, you know, I believe that's a word for the church. This week she's feeling good, her back's, you know, and I mean, God could just, all things are possible, but he works through childlike faith. Mm -hmm. And we can't work things up, and his word does not return void. He just does. I'm feeling uh, led to, to call Jeannie up. How are you doing, Jeannie? Okay. You got any pain in your body or anything? Mm -hmm. Come on up. Is it all right? I need, I need one guy to stand with us. 
or one lady with a chair. Would, who would like to work with us? Paul is. Can we kind of just come in agreement here? And you know, I believe the Lord loves to confirm His word with signs following, right? To stir you up. That's part of our mandate. He wants us to bring a demonstration of His power, right? He wants people. So where's your pain at? Which name? Okay. All right. I'm going to just command that pain to go. Put a chair right behind her. And uh, just, what did you do to your knee? Well, the doctor said I have rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis, the doctor said. I'm not claiming it. That's right. All right, she's pretty. She's <laughs> she's about failing. Okay, so we don't receive that report, right? We receive the report of the Lord, right? And I'm going to lay hands and I'm on your knee, but I believe that pain is gone. And we just yield that pain, that knee, to your righteousness, Lord. Right now, there's a spirit. It's already gone. So start, do it, just check it, just check it. Tell me, is there anything? No pain. Ooh. Hallelujah. <laughs> we can have some Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No pain. What, what's wrong? What? I think being all the way down. You couldn't do that either, okay? Yeah. How about a little no, more, a little more okay. uh, power, fire, gentleness, sure. more revelation? Okay, Lord, I thank you that with every touch of the Lord, there's transformation. And you're becoming mm -hmm. a miracle worker. A, a I mean, he wants you to touch those people and love those people at the all. Hallelujah, Lord, I release my faith for more of your, your mighty miracle-working power to move through her hands. And when I touch your hand, I just release my faith for it. In the name of Jesus, there it is. There it is. Just point of contact. A lot of people have faith, but they don't release their faith. And that's something, too, that I've learned. Fire. There's a fire in the water. Wow. Isn't that something? So what's that like? What's that feel like? Can you put it to words? I'm sitting through her. The best feeling you could ever possibly have. <laughs> but knowing you, Lord, is such an awesome presence, right? Thank you, Lord. You are a comforter, Holy Spirit.